Hello again, and welcome back to Daily JavaScript. Today, um, maybe we'll talk more about CSS styles and uh, you know how they affect what's going on on the screen. Um, you know, in the previous um, videos, I talked about using jQuery's animate function, and while animate works pretty good, it animates values or CSS values. Um, through JavaScript, and a lot of times those don't animate as well as animating directly with CSS. And so, um, you know, here this this simple example provides um, some interesting ideas um, for uh, for how you might do some animation with CSS, but also kind of drive it or create interaction through JavaScript, right? And so the example here just has this little grid of boxes, and you know, when I click on a box, it flips over, right? And if you click again, it, it flips back, right? And what's happening here is um, the mechanic, anyway, is... Let me open up the, the console, and we'll take a look, right? And what you'll see here is I've got, um, I've got a set of boxes here, right? Let me actually refresh that. Okay, so I've got this, this grid of boxes, right? Everybody's got... Everybody's a div, and they all have a class named box, right? And um, the box class, when we when we click on it, what I'm doing is I'm adding the class flip, and that flip class applies a CSS style that creates the rotation in the Y. So you can see when I click on this one here, you can see it gained the class flip, and when I click again, the class flip is removed, and then you know, the animation undoes itself, right? So if I click on this one right here, this very first one, you can see it flips over and it gains the class flip. And then if I click again, it loses the class flip. So actually all JavaScript is doing in this case is adding and removing the class name from one of the divs. Okay, so it's just adding and removing the class. The animation is totally separate, has nothing to do with JavaScript. The animation, the motion, is all handled with the style sheet. And we can look at that here. I guess actually, you know what, I guess I can't view the flip unless the thing has flip. Let's do that, right? So you can see now I've got the class flip on here, and when I look at the, um, the style here, you can see anything that has the class, you know, both the class box and the class flip will have transform, rotate Y 180 degrees, okay? So that's a pretty simple idea, and I, I like this because it, it separates the motion from, from the JavaScript. So your JavaScript can, you know, say to the interface, um, why don't you, you know, you know, go into the flip state for me? And then JavaScript doesn't have to have anything to do with what the flip state is. That's handled with our style sheet. So it's a totally separate area, and you know you could change the flip state, um, and that wouldn't change the way that our programming logic worked. They're not tied together, right? And that's kind of a nice way to to, to work, um, you know. So so anyway, so we'll take a quick look at the example here. This might be a little long, so I th I think I might rebuild the example in another video. Um, but I'll just go over what I have here, and then we'll talk about. Um, talk about it, right? So, uh, you know, my example has a couple features. Let's look at the markup first, right? So, essentially what I've got here is I've got a div called container, and inside that div there's a series of divs, each with the class name box, and that's one of the squares in the grid. There's nine of these, right? Three by three. Inside this there's two other divs with the class front and back, right? And what I did was um, I set these up where um, they're using the um, the CSS, the 3D transform, and there's a, a property that lets you hide the back face. You know, so 3D objects, you can view them from the front and the back, or you can only view them from the front, right? So these are set up to where you can only view them from the front and the back div is rotated 180 degrees. So when the the entire box rotates, we can see the back one, but not the front one, right? And then when we're not rotated, when the outer box is not rotated, um, then we see the front one, and we're looking at the back of the back one, but so we can't see it because it's back face, you know, not visible, right? Um, 
you know, so you, you could imagine this, this box right here as like a plastic sleeve that has two cards in it, right? And, you know, this is the front of the one card, it's facing you, and then the back card is flipped over and it's behind the front card. So when we turn this, you know, the container around, we can see the back one. And when we flip it back around, then we see the front one, right? So these are all set up that way. Let's let's talk about the styles now, right? So um, first of all, I've got the container here, and the container has a you know one pixel solid black border, right? And that's what we have here. There's a solid black border, and it's it's you know 330 pixels by 330 pixels, right? And I want the the boxes here inside to have some perspective, right? So when we use the CSS um, 3D property, you know, to, to animate something in 3D, the container element, the parent element, <coughs> needs to have this perspective property. And the perspective property, you have to include a unit. And essentially, the perspective property determines, you know, how close to the camera or how close to the viewport the object is, right? Or it's really like, I think it's more like how close the camera is to the viewport. And so, you know, the further away something is, the less perspective it has, you know, or the less extreme the perspective looks, right? And the closer it is to the viewport, the more extreme the perspective is. It's kind of like, you know, if you took a, you know, like a, a business card or something and you held it up close to your face and you flipped it around, it looks kind of extreme, like you see a, a stronger you know, change in perspective, you know, <clears throat> where if you uh, if you hold the business card far away from your face and you flip it over, the perspective effect isn't as extreme, right? Um, and we can play with that, right? Like I've got it set to 500 pixels and it, you know, it looks like this. And if I set the, um, <coughs> pardon me, the perspective to 100 pixels and refresh, now you can see that perspective is rather extreme, right? You know, it's kind of kind of strong. You know, and if I if I set it to a thousand, right, then um, now it's it's really pretty mild. Like you don't see very much um, perspective there, right? So uh, so there you go. You got to have a unit here, though. Okay, so if you leave the unit off, it doesn't work. Um, not that I have ever done that by mistake of course, right? But uh, but anyway, so there we go. And, you know, to place this box in the middle of the screen, I, I use this trick here. Um, there's a couple ways to do this. You know, I, I did uh, position absolute, and then I did left of 50% and uh, top of 50%. And this would place the, um, the box in, uh, you know what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll, pu I'll put a comment here, right? And... Um, Gonna have a semicolon there, right? And then we'll do this, right? So, so you know, I'll, I'll place the left and top at fifty percent, and what that'll do is it'll put the upper left corner in the center, right? So that's fifty percent right there. And then what I want to do is I want to move the whole box over half its width and half its height, so half the width to the left and half the height to the top, and that'll place the center where this corner is, right? And that'll put, place the box essentially right in the middle. So I used um, I used this system here. I used calc to calculate the position that is, you know, 50% left and 50% top, which we just saw, and then minus half the width and half the height. So if my width and height is 330, so I subtracted 165, and so that got me right in the middle, okay? And then remember, we, we need to put perspective on the box here because all those other were on container because all the boxes are inside there, and we want them to have perspective, right? Okay, so for each box here, I gave it, you know, width and height of 100 pixels and margin of 5 pixels and float left, right? So, you know, that created my grid. Okay, so that's, that's you know, essentially doing a, a simple layout with the grid. And then, um, and then what I did is I gave it a, a transform rotate Y of zero. You might have to use the vendor prefix 
for various browsers. You know, I'm using um, Chrome right now, so I didn't need it. But you know, you might have to put the uh, the vendor prefix there to get it to work on every um, every browser, right? And then what I did is I gave it, uh, you know, transform style preserve 3D. I'm actually, to be honest, I'm not really sure what this property did. Um, you know, maybe you need that to do the 3D. I just threw it in there because um, I saw it in another example. I didn't really look this one up. Um, and then last year I have uh, um, transition 400 milliseconds. So this is going to determine how long the transition takes, right? So if any properties change on this you know item with class box then those changes are going to take 400 milliseconds which is you know there's a thousand milliseconds to a to a second right so it should take a little less than half a second okay and uh, then here we are you know if we add the flip class to box and then you'll notice there's no dot there if i put a dot there then it then the flip class must be inside of box it has to be a descendant Without the uh, the space, it means that you know something with the box class and the flip class, like both of these classes, are together on an object, right? Um, so you know if we if we apply this, rotate 180 degrees, then you know it's going to take 400 milliseconds, right? Because you know this is box and this is also box, right? So they have the transition. Okay, so now um, inside the box, so the box is essentially just a div that's, you know, it's transparent, there's nothing there, right? But inside the box, if we recall, there, there are two divs, front and back. So front right here is, um, you know, position absolute, left and top is zero, so that, you know, fits it right inside the box, okay? It's got a width and height of 100%, so it fills the entire area right and then it's got back face visibility hidden so that means that when we flip the box over and we're looking at it from behind you know we're talking 3d here so if we use one of the 3d transforms where it actually flips over and we're looking at it from the back side then it, it should be hidden okay and uh, and then i just added this background image right here which is just an image that i have and i did uh you know, no repeat, align center, and that put me in the middle, right? So it took this little picture and put it in the middle. Actually, this is the pink one, okay? And then for the back side, which is the blue one here, I use the same properties. You know, I said, uh, you know, position absolute. You know, I'm kind of repeating properties. I could have made another style maybe and shared some of the properties like, you know, position absolute, left and top is zero, because those are the same for both, right? Um, and then for the back side, the one different property here is that this guy's got, or actually there's there's two different ones, right? Um, because we've got uh, rotate Y 180 degrees. Okay, so imagine that there's two layers in here and one of them is flipped over on the Y axis, right? And then this one's back face visibility hidden. So right now we're not seeing the blue one because we're looking at the back of it and um, and that's hidden, right? And so this has got a background blue, and then it's the other image here, which is the alien, right? The red one. So there you go. So that's the basic setup there. And then to get it to work with, with jQuery to flip over, uh, I imported jQuery at the top. I was playing with uh, velocity. Maybe I'm going to do a video on that later. I'm actually not using that here. Um, but uh, um, I've got, uh, you know, I imported the jQuery library here from the CDN. And then at the bottom here... Um, I've got a script tag, and then I just, you know, I added a script for box. So all the boxes now have a click action, right? And whenever you click them, I'm using jQuery's toggle class. So this method, you know, adds or removes the class name that you put here. Be sure not to put the dot in there. So since this is, it says class, then we assume this is a class name, and we don't have to specify with the dot or the you know, for, or the ID for the hash mark, right? Um, you know, this is a class, so we just put the name, right? So toggle class looks at the element when you, when you, you know, when this action occurs, and if the element, you know, has this class, then it removes the class, and if it doesn't have the class, it adds the class. So that's like a really, you know, common activity that you can get a lot of leverage out of. There's just so many things you can do with this. Um, you know, I find this toggle class to be super useful. Um, and, and that's why, you know, here when I view this, if I click on the first box, you know, it didn't have the flip class and now it gets it. 
Um, and if I, um, you know, if I click again, right, then it had the flip class and now it, it removes it, right? So toggle class adds and removes the class. So anyway, maybe that's useful for people. You could do this with a hover state and then you wouldn't even need any JavaScript. You could use some JavaScript for some other stuff. I was thinking I might make a simple game with this and do some examples, um, example videos of that. So this will be the, kind of my starting place here, right? And I've got my basic mechanic worked out. Um, and there you go, right? And, you know, if we wanted to change the animation, as you saw earlier, you know, I could, you know, change the perspective just by changing my style sheet. And if I want to change the motion, again, since the motion is handled in the style sheet here, you know, I can change the speed. Like maybe I want to make the motion slower. So I'll make it 1000 milliseconds here, you know, and that, oh, I guess I got to refresh there. Now you can see it's much slower. And um, that's not... Um, that doesn't affect my, my, you know, programming logic. So changing the speed there doesn't have anything to do with, you know, how, how the thing works, like it's mechanic, you know, the JavaScript mechanic, right? So that's kind of a nice way of, of, of working, right? So anyway, I hope that's useful to someone and uh, thanks for watching.